Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey, and I'm very excited to have today's guest on the show. Uh, Lindsay Brewer has been my best friend since first grade, and we both share a love for all things health and wellness. Lindsay is an expert in fitness. She's one of the most in-shape people that I know, and it's because of her consistency. And she's dedicated to her own health, and she loves helping other people do the same. So thank you so much, Lindsay, for coming on. I feel like all of our phone calls could probably be a podcast episode because <laughs> health is basically all we talk about. But, um, but I'm glad to uh, officially have you on. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. So why don't you start, just talk about yourself a little bit. That way people get to know you a little bit more. Sure. So uh, my name's Lindsay. I grew up in Charleston, West Virginia. Um, I have a family full of sports fans. Um, everyone, you know, played sports growing up for, I guess, for growing up in Charleston, West Virginia, where there's typically a stereotype of, you know, obesity and um, not really the healthiest lifestyles. I never really saw that because all of my family and friends, you know, through school sports, anything like that, it was it was very centered around moving and um, sports and just kind of getting out and playing. And there was never really a time where I was just sitting around and, um, you know, playing video games or, or, um, eating a bunch of junk food. It just wasn't really, um, it just wasn't really readily available for me. And so I guess growing up, you know, I think swimming was probably the first sport I got into. Um, and I have two older twin brothers. So, naturally anything that they did, I kind of wanted to do the same thing as them or we're all pretty competitive naturally. So, uh, if they were doing it, I had to do it or do it better. And so, um, the boys got into swimming and, you know, they played baseball and basketball and soccer. And I mean, I think eventually they started getting into golf. So, I mean, anything and everything, I was exposed to a lot of sports. And, um, as they kind of started participating in more sports, that's how I kind of gained a little bit more interest. And so, you know, from the beginning it was swimming and then I kind of started playing basketball and then I did gymnastics. I did a little bit of dance. Um, I played church league volleyball, a little bit of softball, soccer. Um, and you know, as the years went on, I kind of found the ones that I enjoyed playing the most and kind of stuck with those. Um, and then throughout I mean, it was, I remember in eighth grade, I think it was eighth grade. I, I was playing, um, I did swimming in the summer. Um, and then I was doing a soccer training for indoor playing in an indoor league. I had fall outdoor league played basketball and in the spring I was doing a, um, competitive league for basketball on the side. And, you know, meanwhile, the whole time my mom was, you know, running the boys around to their practices. And it, to me, it was just, that was the norm. Um, it was, I loved it. And, you know, our parents knew that we enjoyed doing it. So, uh, they made the sacrifice on their end to let us do the things that we enjoyed doing. And so through that, I think I kind of, like I said, I never really had a lot of opportunity to have a lot of downtime. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to just sit around. Um, I enjoyed being outside. I enjoyed playing with my friends and I made a ton of friends through sports and, So I never really, um, I guess also growing up in West Virginia, you're, uh, you have a little bit of the Southern, the Southern comfort food, uh, readily available. (laughs) Um, I think the great thing, and, and one of the things that I still believe in to this day is, you know, it's all about balance Mm -hmm. regardless across the board. And so looking back, I can, I can see that, you know, because of my activity level, I think it helped a lot, you know, because I, I didn't grow up on all, you know, organic food, clean food. I, you know, my mom never, ever, we very, very seldom went out to eat. So we, we cooked at home. We always ate as a family. Um, so that was, I think that made a big difference as well, but, um, you know, it was all about balance. So yeah, I might not have been eating the, lowest calorie meals or the but you were most balanced meal. But yeah, yeah I was yeah. active. And I, I do think that even if you're not going to be able to eat super clean, I think even just cooking at home, you have so much more control right. over the ingredients and, you know, portion control and that kind of thing. So I think that helped a lot too. Um, so we, uh, um, whenever I went into college, I actually was going to study 
um, exercise physiology. And um, I, I ended up going into sports marketing and management and kind of doing the business side of sports, which I really, really enjoyed. But it was great because through that, I was still able to take, you know, the anatomy and physiology, exercise physiology classes, um, the stuff that I enjoy learning about. And I was still able to kind of play, you know, adult league soccer, intramural soccer. And I was still able to, you know, start doing those things. But I kind of dropped off the sports side and then kind of started taking control of the workouts on my own. And so, um, that was also an opportunity for me to kind of figure out how to, you know, cook on my own. And it was definitely a process, but I think, you know, through the years looking back, I can see how it kind of evolved. And, you know, I learned a lot between my mom cooking at home and my grandma's an amazing cook and that kind of thing. But it's a whole different game whenever you're, you know, you're taking care of yourself and you're away from home. But, you know, it was, it was really, I, I mean, I enjoyed kind of taking a step back and looking at it and trying to figure it out on my own and how to, like I said before, you know, try to keep that balance. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you're in Tucson now and, you know, that's a very active place to live, which is, you know, super fortunate for you. And then you don't have to deal with the snow, like that kind of thing slows you down (laughs) during the winter months. You know, we always dealt with that, even though we were playing indoor sports, but it still, it still makes it so nice to be able to get outside and and to be active. Yeah. To be active. I know like you've done a lot of races since you've, uh, since you moved to Tucson, right? How does that help? I mean, keep you on track. Cause I mean, it kind of gives you something to always be training for whenever you sign up for those kind of races. Sure. So, um, it's actually pretty interesting. So I, before I moved out here, I had volunteered, um, through school and different events. I had always helped, you know, uh, set up the race. So anything from pre-marketing to actual race day, management, you know, helping run the course, that kind of thing, helping coordinate awards, any of that stuff. I was always involved on the quote unquote, like behind the scenes component. And so whenever I moved out here, I, um, I believe the first race I ever did was a, it was the Bisbee stair climb, which is, um, it's a beast. That's and a I one to start with, <laughs> it was, and I, I had no idea what I was getting myself into because I, mean, I had one people can't climb the, the stairs at the mall. So, I mean, this is correct. <laughs> and <laughs> so the thing with Bisbee is that it's, it's a really, really cool, it's a small town, but my, at the time I was working at a gym and my, my boss, uh, he's awesome. He, uh, his name's Thomas Chadwick and he's a personal trainer as well. And he kind of got a team. It was really cool. So he, between the staff at the gym and then a lot of his, uh, training clients, he got a huge team. I think there was probably like 20, I'd say like 20 to 25 of us total that participated in the race. Um, everyone obviously having different goals. Some people were doing it competitively. Some people just had a goal to finish. And, um, so he told us that it's, you know, it's a race and you're running around the town. The catch is that it's a pretty small town and it's, it's, um, it's the catch is that there are a thousand stairs that you're going to run up wow. throughout, throughout the town. And, you know, they're, they're broken up. So you do, um, you know, the first set of stairs and they, all the stairs have it marked how many you're going to be going up. So, you know, the first set of stairs might be 150 steps. And remember and that then, is Arizona. Correct. So this is, yeah, this is going on. Thankfully, you know, the races always start early, but you know, it's, it's, you know, I don't know, 80, 85 degrees or so. Um, and you're running, it's pretty cool. Like I said, so you're running a little bit and then you run up some more stairs and then you run maybe, you know, a quarter of a mile and then you run up another flight of stairs and the stairs vary and all that fun stuff. So that was my, my first race. And I, I just remember I had, at that point I had never ran further than I think I think maybe my longest duration on a treadmill or, you know, and I didn't even really run outside before that. I think it might've been just 30 minutes Mm -hmm. and I always lifted and stuff before, but you know, running had never been a, um, a huge priority for me. I I would make sure I did it on the treadmill, but as far as races and that kind of thing, it just didn't really motivate me too much. And so he talked me into doing this race. I was on the fence about it and I ended up participating and I, I, 
remember that at one point I, I thought I was, I just remember I was, I was thinking like, what in the world did I get myself into? This is, this is insane. And, um, so I, I get through and the scenery is amazing. And so like halfway through, I'm having this hard time. And then I, I remember I got past one of the hardest set of stairs and, um, in the course, and I got to the top of the stairs and it was actually probably the longest break you have before the next flight, but you're, um, you're running through this really cool area. The views are amazing. You know, everyone is just cheering you on and they're so supportive of each other. And it kind of gives you this little bit of a, what they call like a runner's high. And it, the, I don't know, it's, it's just crazy how much it motivates you. And it's you kind of really get the this atmosphere. It's, it's, it it's, is. it's cool. If you've never done any kind of race, even if you can do like a 5k, you'll, I mean, it, it's a whole different environment. I know people say like, you can't run for fun, but I mean, it, it's, it's, it's all about the environment. And like she said, the mm-hmm. cheering and more of the, the feeling after you've completed it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's kind of the reward of it is it, you feel amazing after you finish a race like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it was a very, it was very unique to me because I had, I guess, because I had always been on the other side. And like I said, I'd always been active and, you know, I enjoy supporting people and, you know, anything like that, but I'd never been on that side of the race. And so it was a really cool thing because I, I was actually feeling what I was watching people do before. And so, um, you know, I remember we finished the race and it ended up being, I think the total distance is it's, it's either four and a half or five miles. I think it's right at five miles. And then a total again of a thousand stairs throughout the course. And for someone who had only ran, you know, (laughs) maybe 30 minutes at a time on a treadmill before, for me, that was a really big deal. It was, it was, um, something I'd never done before. And I, I finished, my goal was just to finish and, um, and I was able to do that. And it was a really cool feeling. So after that, um, I actually, that was, and I've been told from a few people, once you do one race, you kind of get yeah. hooked. And that is a hundred percent true. So I, uh, I did that in October and that weekend I signed up for a race in December. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I'm not kidding. It was like every six months. And I started out just doing five K's and cause for me, that was, you know, I just enjoyed doing it. And that, you know, it's about a 30 minute run for me at my pace at the time. And it was, it was fun. I did a few without even knowing anyone. I, you know, I moved out here And I, I didn't, I knew a few people, but you know, not a huge group of friends by any means. And so, you know, you meet some really, really cool people, you get to hear their stories. And again, it's this, it's this cool supportive community that, um, that's a really, it's a really neat thing to experience. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. And yeah, it is all just about having a great community that pushes you and has the same values. Um, and Lindsay, I wanted to get into a little bit with just the consistency because I mean, not necessarily with just running, but just with working out in general. I know a big conversation that we have a lot is is just all about the importance of consistency because it really comes down to it's just just getting some type of movement <laughs> into your day. Like even yes. if you're not able to have a hardcore workout, like if it's been a long day and you don't want to do anything, if you can just do something for five or 10 minutes, like that makes a huge difference. Or if you are able to work out, like get a normal workout in, obviously that's going to be the most beneficial. Um, right. But if you wanted to, to go in on a little bit on, on what's allowed you to be so consistent, because, you know, like I gave said in your intro, I mean, you're one of the most consistent people with fitness that I know. <laughs> um, just a quick story for, for people listening. Um, you know, I had I had a baby um, a little over a year ago. Side and- note, cutest baby ever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and... Um, and so she came to visit, Lindsay came to visit us. She flew in from, from Tucson to, um, to where we were, were living at close to, uh, Clearwater. And she got there like a week after the baby was born. And she was like, she gets to the house and she's like, yeah, yeah, we had, we had an early flight, but I got up at 3 a.m. so I could get my, uh, workout in. We're like, what are you talking <laughs> about, Lindsay? But that's just the kind of person that she is. She's just <laughs> extremely consistent with her workouts. And, and I'm sure she'll tell you, maybe not every workout is perfect and it doesn't have to be. But if you're consistent over a long period of time, you're, you're going to see results and you're, you're going to feel the benefit. So if you wanted to kind of touch on that a little bit. Absolutely. And that's really funny that you remember yeah. that story. <laughs> I forgot about that, but that totally sounds like me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess big picture, I think something that is really important for people to keep in mind. And I think, unfortunately, it's something that turns a lot of people away from working out. And, and to be honest, I don't even... 
I say workout. Um, but I think it's important also to kind of choose our words wisely when it comes to exercise, because, you know, a lot of people associate that with a negative connotation. So, um, you know, because of whether it's health restriction or, you know, someone's had an injury or something like that, not everyone is able to do, you know, P90X or something super vigorous that, you know, is kind of, you know, a harder impact on your body. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing across the board is just moving. And I think that, you know, depending on your age, your, your availability time-wise, you know, everyone, everyone has a different schedule. You know, some people are only able to fit in a 30 minute workout and that's totally fine. Some people are only able to just go walk for 15 minutes at a time, but that's totally okay. The, the big picture is that you just want your body to move. So, um, it's really cool. I've seen, even at the gym, I've seen people that, um, have been in wheelchairs and they're not able. So, you know, they're, they're incredibly restricted to what they're able to do. Mm -hmm. And I actually talked to, um, someone that was handicapped whenever I worked at the gym and I, I complimented her on how, how dedicated she was. I mean, she was in there. I worked the morning shift. So I opened up the gym and she was in there every morning and it didn't matter, you know, like what it, it, the fact that she had, a you know, a limitation for what she could do, never stopped her. She was in there every day. She just, you know, modified what she could do based on, you know, her injury and, and she made it work. And, um, I think that if people can kind of almost take a step back and just look at, you know, look at your day and say, everyone gets the same amount of time. Everyone gets 24 hours. So if you can kind of take a step back and see, you know, what your daily schedule is like and just find those little pockets of time where, again, it doesn't have to be a vigorous workout, but if you see that you typically have, you know, a little bit of downtime during lunch, go take a walk. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to go run. It doesn't have to be power walking or anything. Just go, you know, if you have a, if you work in a complex, like I work in a corporate complex. So all the time there are people walking around the complex and just, you know, trying to get a break from their desk. Um, you know, like the recommendation is like every, is it every 20 or 30 minutes? Like you should get up and get out of that seated position because that's, it's, it's, um, it's really hard. Yeah. And I, and I just saw a stat and I wish I had written it down, but it was just talking about how the desk job is one of the most dangerous jobs and the most, the highest injury job almost compared to some of these hardcore, um, outside construction yep. because they're on their feet. They're putting mm-hmm. positive loads on their spine. They're moving. They're getting fresh air. And yep. when you're in a desk all day, you're not moving. You're in a bad position. You're, you're decreasing your core mus- muscles. Um, anything that could go wrong, it, you're causing it by sitting there. Absolutely. And then you go out and be a weekend warrior and go do something crazy <laughs> and, you know, play that. <laughs> and then weirdly enough, you get injured. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you can't live your, your ice hockey dream on the weekend and sit in a desk all day. <laughs> it's just not going to work. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, it really is crazy. And I know that's, do you, do you have any other advice lens for, for people that do have desk jobs? Because I know that that is a big topic and you know, a lot of people have for sure. a job where they have to sit all day. I know that you have a job where you actually have to do a lot of sitting. So, um, yes. some advice that you could give people with that. Sure. So I think if you can, so kind of, I guess, circling back to how to be consistent, um, and how you can, how you can incorporate that in with your, you know, your work life and your, and kind of like your personal time. So for example, for me, I, I don't have enough time to do my full, what I want to do for exercise in one bulk amount of time. So the way that I do it, I get up and it's, it's nothing crazy. I get up a half hour earlier than what I would typically. And, um, I kind of, I, I pretty much know what I'm going to do. But, um, I get up a half hour early and I give myself 30 minutes to do some kind of exercise. So whether I'm walking the dog for 30 minutes, if I go take her for a run, if I do, um, uh, work out, you know, at the gym, whatever it is, I, I give myself 30 minutes, no excuses. So regardless of what happens during the day, I always have that done. Right. Um, and then, so at work, a lot of, a lot of really great things that, um, there's a lot of things that people can do. I, I find that 
and I'm sure this happens with a lot of people, depending on your job, um, you know, if you're on the phone a lot, you don't have a lot of time to, uh, I guess, take extended walks and that kind of thing. You know, if you're on the phone all day, you don't have a lot of time. And so what I found is that I, sometimes I'll, I'll bring in one of my blender bottles, which I think they hold 24 ounces of water. Um, but if, uh, if I drink, if I drink out of that, I'm less like, it's good because I'm drinking more water and I know I'm staying hydrated. Mm -hmm. However, I get up less to go refill. So what I found is that I actually, our company gives the, um, those red solo cups. And so I go and get those and it's, it's, it holds less water, but it gives me a reason to get up more. Right. And so I kind of, whenever I go to refill it, I'll, I'll refill it and I'll just kind of walk a little bit, you know, and I'll go and do like a lap around, um, part of the office or I'll go outside and walk a lap around the building or, you know, just, just get up and move, get the blood circulating. Yeah. That's awesome. And, um, he, people, loosen up get, your muscles. people get distracted. And I think that, that that gives an easy reminder, like, Hey, I'm, I'm out of water, but I should probably Absolutely. move because I've been really busy and distracted. So I need to get up and, and move for sure. I think if you can, you can, if it's, it's little things. And I think yeah. it, uh, it's hard because, you know, it depends on your, your, office location, that kind of thing. But I, I know that's helped me a lot. Um, whenever I go to, if I need to get up and, you know, make print, either print something at the copier or, um, go up to the front desk or anything like that, I basically will take the long way back to my desk. Um, and it's nothing, I mean, it's not like it's a super extended route, but just, right. Right. Or take take the stairs instead yeah, of the elevator exactly. unless you're exactly. like on the 80th floor then please don't take the stairs sure, or just not... take or just take like one flight of stairs and get on the elevator but you know be smart yeah. but, little um, thing. I mean it's little things yeah it is and and I think one of the common obviously when you look at working out there's typically two excuses that you hear or two reasons people tell themselves why they can't typically it's t- I don't have time or it's too expensive to join a gym but I sure. think another big reason is people um, will say that, well, you know, I'm just, I'm so busy that I'm, I'm so tired. But I, I think it's, it's one of those things that you have to realize that exercise provides energy or movement. You know, we're saying movement, movement provides energy. So, you know, typically it's not, you're, you're not too tired to work out. You're, you're, Mm-mm. you're just, you're tired because you haven't worked out. If, and you know, exactly. Lindsay's, Lindsay's waking up 30 minutes earlier to just to get something in. And you might think that, uh, you know, I don't, if I get 30 minutes up early, I'm going to be extremely tired the rest of the day. But what you don't realize is that it's the opposite. (laughs) You're going to have more energy. You're it's, it actually helps your brain, the firing of the, of the um, nerves in your brain. So you're going to be more focused. You're going to, like I said, more energy. You're going to be more creative. It really sets up your entire day. Your mindset's going to be better. You're going to be happier in the office. So that 30 minutes it's, it's like Lynn said, it, it's the opposite. And, and I think once you realize that you can, you know, adjust your schedule to that because it, it really makes a huge difference on your entire day and sure. just overall health in the, in the long term. Yeah. And I think too, it's, it's interesting. I'm not a, I try to be, but I'm not a coffee drinker. I've, I've tried not so a bad hard. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't hear that. I've I, tried hard to be a coffee drinker. I can't do it. I'm, I'm really sensitive to caffeine just in general. And I, I don't really love the taste, just can't get into it, but it's, it's pretty cool because, um, that's actually how I was able to realize the energy that I get from working out. So, um, exercise in general, like I said before, whether it's, um, walking, running, um, gosh, anything really yoga. I mean, it doesn't just because yeah, I mean, you you're wake not up, wake running up or lifting 10 weights squats and 10 pushups. Yeah. And like you'll be yeah. like, you, it just small things really. It, it's, it's crazy to me. I will. And that's actually one of the reasons why I never, I mean, granted if I'm sick, <laughs> that's yeah, one yeah. thing, but, um, you know, I never really let myself miss that morning workout if anything, I might do a really, really light, I might just go for, you know, a 20 minute walk in the evening. If I, if I feel a little, um, you know, if I'm busy or whatever, but the morning workout is really important to me because it, that wakes me up more than I I would feel with coffee. Like I feel, I, I don't know, I've had it a few times, the, the caffeine buzz, but, it's, but for me, I get the same effect from, just doing something active for 30 minutes that gets my heart rate going that gets my blood going you know i yeah. i 
without the I crash. I feel focused and exactly. I feel focused and ready to go. Typically, if I I've noticed that if I if I you know if if life gets crazy, you know, life always happens. If life gets crazy, and I um, you know miss a miss a couple workouts for a few days or whatever. I, it's funny, those days I actually, I'll, I'll eat worse. I, I feel almost, it's almost like scatterbrained, yep. you know, like, um, and it's not just because I'm that I'm off my routine or anything. It's, it's because I do think that provides a little bit of structure for the, for the rest of your day. You know, it does. if you, if you start out with a good workout or you're able to go walk for 30 minutes or anything, um, it kind of sets the foundation for the day and you're more inclined, in my opinion, I think you're more inclined to make better decisions. If you just busted your butt and you know, if, if going for a walk for 30 minutes is your goal for the day and you just did that, it, you're motivated, you're ready to go. So you don't want to go and just eat a sugary breakfast or go eat, you know, like crap for the rest of the day. It kind of gives you a little bit of a foundation. Exactly. And it's, it's really just about gradually, you know, just being consistent and just, making this a habit. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, yep. it's just creating habits. I mean, your life is a result of your habits. It, it's not on the things that you do every once in a while, you know, you sure. don't work out once and, you know, get a six pack, you know, we all know, <laughs> we all know that, you know, it's just, it's made up of habits, but I mean, the good news is you have the ability to change your habits and to become, you know, the person that you want to be and to, and to gain the health that you want to have. So it's all about just, changing those habits, pick one thing, decide I'm going to do this yeah, for I five think that's minutes a in the really morning. Good point. Yeah. It's just one thing at a time. Like don't wake up tomorrow morning, please don't do this and say, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to be like Lindsay and go work out for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to go eat a big kale salad, work out again later, do a two a day. It's just, pick, <laughs> you know, you're just, no, no, pick it's one not... thing, pick one thing, do it this week, next week, do two things. I mean, I, yeah. whatever you want to do, but it's just, Decide what work and decide what works for you. I mean, maybe you know you don't like doing an early morning run, but you can wake up and do a few exercises in your living room. I mean, just figure out what works for you, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be, just really, just has to be consistent. Yeah, I think the one of the one of my favorite things about exercise in general is that it's it doesn't you know regardless of um, what your favorite you know what your favorite style of workout. I mean, shoot, I changed if, if I would look at how much my workouts and, um, just really what I've done for exercise has changed in general since I started. I mean, it's crazy. I've, I can see if I would do the same workouts that I did back, you know, whenever I first started Mm -hmm. to now, I would, I would probably hate them and never do them. But right (laughs) now I would like before I think I, you know, I go through phases. Sometimes I'll do a certain type of exercise for, you know, a few weeks. And then it, it's just like, eh, I'm, I'm kind of over that. And then, yeah. and it's not like that's, that's totally okay. What you figure out, I think it's important for people to just, it's okay to, it's okay to be, um, almost inconsistent with the type of exercise you're doing because mm-hmm. that actually, that actually helps you. That is a good um, thing. Yeah. It's yeah. good to keep your body guessing. It's good to learn a variety. You know, I like to run. I like to walk. I like to jump rope. I like to do plyo. I like to, I mean, like I love to keep my body guessing and it's also great because I never get, I, I try not to let myself get bored. Yeah. Um, so I think if, if people in just as an overall rule of thumb, like you said, it's a really great piece of advice to, um, kind of just said, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, um, I don't make new year's resolutions. I always say I never <laughs> like I, it's too, it's too overwhelming. But one thing that I really like to do and it's helped me and I, I do it with my exercise too, is I either do quarterly or monthly goals. And so, um, you know, if I have a race coming up, I've, I've done a half marathon in March for the last three years. So for me, the first quarter, that's always my focus. Um, and then after I accomplish that, that's kind of like my, all right, I checked that box. Let's do it. So then I kind of, look and see, okay, what, what do I want to focus on for this next few weeks or this next month or whatever, whatever the case is, just identify something. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be, you know, super small, but just set a goal for yourself. And, um, there's so many resources now between books online, everyone, I mean, YouTube channels, Instagram, there's the, the resources out there are incredible. Um, the disclaimer being is that form 
you have to be safe. You don't want to hurt yourself. So don't get, don't get, um, a little overzealous if you're just starting out, you know, you want to be, you want to be careful and you want to make sure that you have the good form so you don't get injured and that kind of thing and just take it slow and figure out what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I love that you mentioned about the goals. I think that's, I think that's probably one of the biggest takeaways besides consistency. Um, what it kind of goes hand in hand because if, if you can just decide what your goal is, just something that, and, and really if you can make it not like looks goals, but, but no, really never. a bigger, a bi- <laughs> never do that. I mean, just to have a bigger reason, like you want to be healthier for your grandkids or you want to be, you know, you want to be healthier for your own kids. I mean, just, you want to get off your blood pressure. You want to get off your blood so, pressure. Yeah, know. exactly. Important, important reasons that will keep you going when you're, when you are tired or after work, when you'd rather go home and watch Netflix, like have, <laughs> a, have a bigger reason why always have that. You know, I think, you know, I, ha- I think having like a 5k goal, I think that's a really great goal because you have to somewhat train Obviously, don't just run for those type of things. Do some other workouts. That way, you're strengthening your whole body, and and, and right. you know, during that time as well, it's it's not an awful thing to do. You could even walk some of it. You you'd be surprised how many people oh, walk sure. the five k. Just a, a random challenge, Lindsay. I'm going to put it out there for anybody that signs up for any five k. I don't care what it is. That's you know, a few months from now, and you send me a message or send Lindsay a message, Lindsay. So I'm going to put you to work, Lindsay. Lindsay's going to make oh, you a workout plan to get you ready for your first 5K, or even if it's not your first 5K. But oh, she'll sure. uh, she'll make you a plan if you have to talk to her. I know she will. So if you sign up for a 5K that's in the next few months, she'll send you a game plan and, and we'll get you going. Not because of the running. It's not about the running. It's a, it, it's about making a goal and doing Just consistent, going after, it. going after it and having a consistent day in, day out, do something. And, yep. um, I promise it's doable and, um, I know Lindsay will, will make it fun for <laughs> you guys. So, um, so yeah. definitely reach out to us if you decide to do that. Put me on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> but but <laughs> no, yeah, I think, I think calling out the why is a really important thing. You, I mean, you and I know we talk about that a lot on, you know, a few different levels, whether it's nutrition or exercise or, you know, a few other topics. But I think that, like you said, if you can identify if you can identify that at the onset, whenever you're having a day, um, and this, this truly works because I have absolutely used this against myself. Um, whenever, you know, people are motivated different ways. Mm -hmm. So some people need to hear it from a coach. Some people love to have someone just yelling at them and telling them, (laughs) you know, do 20 more pushups, do whatever. Um, I like to, I'm more of a self motivator. So, um, I like to, you know, you identify your goal at the onset and you're going to, everyone's human. You're going to have a day where you're going to have multiple days where you, where you, you know, you feel tired, you've had a really crappy day and, um, you know, you have personal stuff going on, whatever the case is, there will always be something that comes up because we're human. But if you can identify that why at the onset, um, and that why may change and that's totally cool. Um, but if you can identify that at the onset, whenever you have those days, if you, if it's only you that knows the, that, that, you know, the why, and you kind of just tell yourself, look, I'm going to go, I'm going to, it's only, you know, this is what I need to do to accomplish my bigger goal. I'm just going to go out there and do it. I need mm-hmm. to do this to, to reach that goal. Or if you tell, I know that I tell you a lot of my goals. Um, and it's great because I mean, I, how many times have I texted you and I, I'll tell you, <laughs> Hey, I really need to get out of bed or I, I really need to go do this. Will you tell me? And you'll text me back and say, <laughs> you know, get I really out of need to not eat this cookie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean, sometimes you, you know, it's okay to, yeah. if you need someone to just tell you as a reminder, like, Hey, don't forget, this is your goal. This is what you want to accomplish. And you just need that little push. Absolutely. Do yeah. It. You need, you need somebody that you can, um, you know, that can help hold you accountable. You know, like for me, I, I am way, it's easier for me to be consistent with nutrition. I it's not hard for me to turn down a piece of cake. Like I don't crave cookies. I <laughs> just this got, is how we're different. This is how we're different. I I really like. I enjoy eating healthy. Like you know, if people make fun of me for not wanting that pizza or that cookie, like I just I honestly just don't want it. I my taste buds have changed. I like I honestly just don't want it. But for exercise. I really have to make myself do it. And it's not because I don't like it. It's just I find other things that I could be doing. So I, I, you know, and I do, you know, and I work out and I make myself do it um, throughout the week. But it's it's something that doesn't come naturally to me. Whereas, you know, Lindsay is is like the opposite. She can work out no matter what. And I have to tell her not to eat that cookie. 
So it's, it's, it's we balance each other out, out very, very well. Reach out to the, they're, oh man. But no, it's, it's true. I think, I mean, I can't, I know that, you know, a lot of people, I guess, kind of bring in balance back into play. Um, you know, a lot of people, I'm probably a great example of it. I, I am, as you said, I'm very consistent with exercise and I mean, gosh, how many times have I texted you or called you asking questions about nutrition or like, Hey, this is, this is an area I'm really trying to focus on right now. Can you help me figure out how to best approach this? I mean, I'd say probably eight, you know, 85% of what I eat throughout the week is pretty on point. Um, but I, you know, sweets are my, <laughs> they're my kryptonite. I cannot say no which is, to them. Which, but... is, which is cool. Which is cool. If it's, if it's not the majority and for you, it's not the majority. Sure. So and sure. that's, and that's I the will... point. It's, it's all about balance. Exactly. And I think if you can, um, you know, especially a note for people that, you know, that may be beginning, uh, this process, I think it's really important to note that, um, it's, it's good if you can just make small substitutions. So if you're like, we kind of touched on earlier, if you're, if you have never ran a mile, which is very common for people, if you've never run a mile before in your life without stopping, that's, totally normal, but don't out the gate, just go, Hey, I'm going to go run a mile and I'm just going to go for it. Like you, first of all, you can get injured. Secondly, you know, it, you want to work up to that. So it's the same thing on the nutrition side. Um, people that I think, unfortunately where they kind of fall off is where they decide to just rip off the bandaid and they're like, all right, I'm going from junk food to, you know, eating the, the, what is it? The clean 15 or whatever, you know, it's, it's, but that's how you, you're not, it's kind of a work in progress and you don't want to, you don't want to set yourself up for failure. So I think if you can kind of make small substitutions and maybe even just take the time to learn about, you know, why the nutrition is important. Exactly. You know, I was saying, you know, I, I don't crave those things. It's just something that I don't want, but that wasn't always the case. Like, no, that wasn't, we ate pizza (laughs) many times together. (laughs) You know, we, we, in elementary school, we, we, I think we had a special booth at uh, captain D's like, honestly, it's, it's, it's a working process. I mean, like this has been a, for myself, this has been a six year process of learning and of figuring out what I like and what I don't like and what, is healthy and what's bad information and what's good information. And right. it's, it's, it's really a process and it just starts with making a single change. Like it's, um, I look back now and I, and I, it's, there's so many changes, but, and I have to remember where other people are at too, because I wasn't always at the point that I'm at now, but it's, right. it's a process. Right. And I think if you can just, um, you know, it's the same thing with, with, uh, that I mentioned with the resources for working out, there are a ton, a ton of resources available for, on the nutrition side as well. I personally, I love learning about that. I wanted, um, actually wanted to get a minor in nutrition or dietetics. I I mean, it's just very interesting to me, but, um, for me, you know, not everyone is like that. Not everyone is weird. Like I am and thinks that that is interesting, but (laughs) besides me, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) we're awesome. So, um, but not everyone, you know, finds that interesting. So, if you can maybe just like you said, identify one area where you're going to try to focus on, you know, it might be, um, learning to incorporate more vegetables, you know, maybe you have a really starch heavy, uh, meal right now and you you're trying to figure out a better way to incorporate some greens or, um, some fresh fruit throughout your day and that kind of thing, you know, even if it's just starting out with your lunches, you know, and, you say, all right, I'm going to try and incorporate some salads, some healthy lunches. And there's so many varieties of meals that you can do. Um, Pinterest hates to do a Pinterest plug. It's really good. (laughs) It's a really good place. I think (laughs) I, that's, it was a good resource for me whenever I started to kind of make the adjustment in the nutrition side. It's, it's not intimidating. There's so many people that, I mean, unfortunately there is some, there is some bad information out there. So you got to keep your eyes open, but, um, it's a really good resource for people. And, you know, you're, you're hearing the information from people that aren't quote unquote experts. They're trying out stuff just like you are. So they're going to be more willing to tell you like, eh, this really didn't work for me. And if you have a question about a resource, feel free to reach out to Lindsay, reach out to me. We'll help guide you and let you know if it is a good resource or not. You could also go through past podcast guests because everybody that I've talked to is, is a reliable person that knows what they're talking about. So go through and look, go through and look at their social media pages. And those are all going to, all going to be 
really awesome resources as well. But I mean, Lindsay and I are here to help you however you need it. So feel free to reach out at any time. Yeah, I think, and I mean, you and I have both gone, I mean, I'm probably not as great as you are in the nutrition department, but. No, you do um, pretty great. I was, I was joking about the cookie. I'm absolutely (laughs) not as good as you in the nutrition department, but I think it's, you know, I think it's important for people to see that, you know, I think a lot of, it's the same with working out. A lot of times people see these athletes and these, um, you know, these high end fitness model, whoever they are, they look at them and they think that that is the norm and you know, that they don't make mistakes and that they haven't learned anything. And that's, that couldn't be farther from the truth. Those mm-hmm. people, everyone has a starting point, you know? Um, and everyone has had to, has had to, you know, climb those stairs to get to wherever they are today. Yeah. And so, um, I think it's important for people to know, you know, try to keep everything in balance and it's okay. You know, if you, everyone also has an off day when it comes to eating or working out or, you know, having a hard emotional day, you know, that that's completely normal. So it's also really important to not beat yourself up for that. You should, you should let that happen and just kind of refocus, start the next day fresh and just say, all right, you know what? Yesterday I kind of didn't eat great, but today's a new day and I'm going to make sure I do my exercise. I'm going to, you know, make an extra effort to try to offset what I, what I ate yesterday. Exactly. And just, I mean, like you said, just, you know, always, if you do bad, jump back on the next day and just get back to the consistency. You didn't ruin, yep. you didn't ruin your plan because you had one bad meal. Like, no, you know, not it, at all. It, it's all good. You just have to just have to be consistent. Yep. So awesome. So Lindsay, you know, I've been, um, I've been, you know, throwing out work for you to do. So what's the best people, <laughs> what's the way for people to reach out to you? So, um, email, social media, what's the best place for people to go and follow you and, and check it, check out everything that you're doing, the races that you're doing, and, um, just keep up with what, what you're up to. Yeah. So right now, um, Instagram is probably what I use the most often. And apparently now I have a reason to post a little bit more, but, uh, (laughs) you're welcome. (laughs) Thanks for that. Yep. (laughs) All about accountability. Yes. Um, so, um, you can follow me on Instagram. My, um, handle is just Lindsay one zero zero three. And, um, I can also, provide you my email. So if anyone wants to contact me, they can feel free to reach out for whether it's workouts, nutrition, um, just if they're just maybe even trying to get a big picture plan or trying to figure out how to best achieve a goal, you know, anything like that. I'm more than happy to help. Awesome. And what, what, what is your email? And then I'll also put it everything in the show notes. It's lindsaywvu at gmail.com. Got it. And if you're not a WVU fan, sorry about that. (laughs) It's not acceptable. <laughs> it's not acceptable. That's something she'll be coaching you through is how to change your college fan That's going to be my preference. first goal for you. <laughs> if you want to run a 5K, you have to be a Mountaineer fan. That's the first, that's your first problem. <laughs> awesome. That's great. So Lindsay, um, a new, um, a new ending question that I'm having on for each guest that, that comes on for the, the rest of the podcast, you know, what's, what's one piece of advice that you would give the audience something that is you know, helped you along the way that maybe you wish you knew through your whole process, but just what's what one piece of advice that you could give to the audience? I think, I think it would be, and you hear me say this all the time, uh, life happens, you know, yep. it's, you're, you're never going to have a perfect day every day. Um, whether, like I said earlier, whether it's a injury or, you know, you have family stuff going, whatever it is, something is always going to pop up. But I think if you, make sure that you keep your focus on whatever your goal is, whatever you're trying to achieve. Don't let a life happens moment, let you lose sight of, of your goal. You know, if anything, let that kind of be your motivating force to make you want to hit that goal a little bit harder. I love it. That's perfect. Awesome. Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Thanks.